Judy and we are here with another episode of SW and True Crime Reacts. So before we get into it, hey, how y'all been? Life has been up and down, but guess what? I see Beyonce this weekend, so it's pretty up for me right now. <laughs> okay, y'all, we are watching the third episode of The Playboy Murders and reacting. If you haven't checked out the first two episodes, no, they are not um, linked, but they are very, very informative and very shocking, and I think you will love them. Um, but other than that, if you have seen them, which one was your most shocking episode? For me, it would have to be the second one because it totally threw me for a ringer. And also, did you like how I did the format? Let me know if you want me to do something differently or, you know, this is my first reaction type of, um, yeah, it's my first time ever reacting to a series. So let me know if you like the format. There are six episodes, so we are halfway through. Can y'all believe that? I saw that there is a new A&E show called The Secrets of Playboy. Um, would y'all like me to start that next? Or the Anna Nicole Smith series or documentary on Netflix? Let me know in the comments below. I want to thank y'all so, so much for all the support on my previous videos, my vlogs, my hauls, my other true crime videos. Um, I see everything and I really appreciate y'all. We are so, so close to 10K. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like my content. I really love y'all so, so much and I appreciate y'all. If I haven't said that already, I feel like I say that a million and one times. <laughs> Without further ado, we're getting into our third episode of The Playboy Murders. And this episode is called A Moth to a Flame. And I believe it's about the model Christina Craft. Let's get into it. I have um, my favorite, a Caesar salmon salad. So we're really going to get into all of it. Let's go. Modeling was definitely a career that Christina was really passionate about. For her to be in Playboy, I mean, that's something she'd always wanted to do. Thousands of women would submit photos every month to be a cyber girl. You have to be gorgeous and have could have seen something really special in Christina. But Playboy models get a lot of unwanted attention from men. It can be a real problem, especially if you find yourself around the wrong person. There had been prior activity related to Christina. She did allude to the fact that she thought she may have been drugged. What? She heard a man somewhat forcefully telling Christina, don't call the police. This person had told him perhaps the most chilling detail in this whole case. Who becomes a victim like this twice in a couple days? Oh, this one's about to be good. I told y'all. I think they get better and better. On August 22nd, I was in the detective unit of Lower Marion Township Police Station talking to detectives when a call came in about a check the well-being at Christina Kraft's residence at a high-end condo complex in Ardmore. Ardmore is right outside Philadelphia. It's in a part of the suburbs generally known to be a very wealthy, affluent area. It's a close-knit community. A lot of people walk to places, a lot of stores, restaurants, bars, things like that. I wouldn't say it's a high crime area. Very wealthy and full of people who call 911 and call the police for every every matter of issue in their life. Mm. Normally I wouldn't <laughs> go on to check the well-being. But I decided to go on this call right away because I was advised by detectives that there had been prior activity related to Christina. Why he did why he say he didn't want to go? Man named Alex made the call. He was worried about his girlfriend from Christina because she wasn't answering her cell phone. 
and he couldn't get into the apartment because the interior door was locked. Mm. So we had to force entry into the apartment in our room. We saw blood splatter and saw what clearly was a body on a bed with a comforter perfectly placed over top. We pulled the comforter back and it's a badly beaten girl. There's no question that it was a homicide. Wow. I vividly remember walking in thinking that it was probably one of the most gruesome scenes that I had seen. Oh my she God. She had a broken nose. There were fractures of both eyes. <gasps> Fracture somebody's eyes is nuts. Death. The victim of this brutal homicide was Christina Carlin Craft. Wow. Beautiful she was girl. in her mid 30s. She was a Playboy model. The victim was found strangled in her condo. Police made that disturbing discovery on Sibley Avenue in Ardmore. They were called there to make a welfare check. Christina Carlin Craft was the Playboy Cyber Girl of the Week on May 4th, 2009. Christina grew up in South Jersey along the shore. From an early age, she was very interested in modeling and the entertainment industry. In 2000, Christina graduated from high school in Linwood, New Jersey. And for a couple years after that, she worked as a waitress in the South Jersey area and in the Borgata in Atlantic City. In 2003, Christina met Alex, her longtime boyfriend and future fiance, at the Jersey Shore on Labor Day weekend. Aww. And the two were incredibly close. He was very supportive of her modeling career. The two were a couple for 15 years until the time of her death. Wow. Christina's father said that she was the light in his life. This is the photo shoot that I actually met Christina at, that we did together. It was the Smack Some and Stuff magazine three-day event. This event was a model search. There were girls flown in from around the country, and her and I were chosen as the Max Some and Stuff magazine model search winners. Aww. They put our photos in several of the Maximum and Stuff magazines, and having that exposure really helped both of our modeling careers take off. On the Playboy.com website, you could join what was called the Cyber Club. It was a subscription membership, and each week they would showcase a nude photo shoot of a different woman, and she would be the Cyber Girl of the Week. A Playboy Cyber Girl had an online pictorial. It was very similar to the Playmate pictorial. It was a very glamorous, softly lit, nude pictorial. And there would be a little blurb about the girl. You have to be gorgeous, but you also have to have that really like fresh faced, kind of innocent, but kind of sexy look. It was a big deal to be a Cyber Girl and it could definitely be a stepping stone to even bigger things. I know I say oh this is 35 minutes and, but I know I always say this but why do they never include women of look why do they never include women of color or any woman that's not the average like I don't know maybe I'm triggered because like I applied for Playboy like I told y'all and like they um I was like, maybe I'm too fat and black. I don't know. Combination. But. I don't know. And then I have some alternative friends who have tattoos and stuff. And they said they have too many tattoos. And it's like, what? But anyway, let's get back to it. Christina Craft. Beautiful girl. Cyber Girl shoot went live in 2009. Christina would have been invited out to stay at the mansion and do a playmate test for the magazine. And after she was selected as Cyber Girl, she would have been invited to all the parties and would have had access to that world. To meet Hef personally, that's kind of an extra step, kind of have to catch his attention. Hef could have seen something really special in Christina. Christina didn't become a playmate and that was her ultimate goal. The playmate selection process is incredibly competitive. Thousands of women would send in their photos every month to be considered to be a Playboy playmate. And from that, only one woman mm -hmm. would be chosen each month. Ultimately, the final decision would be half. And there's so many reasons that Christina may not have been chosen. 
maybe they already had too many brunettes scheduled that year, or maybe they were just looking for somebody with a little bit more of a different story. She was 26, and unfortunately, in the Playboy world, that was considered a little old. Oh, wow. If you don't make it to that next step of being a playmate, that could be a huge disappointment. It could have a big effect on your life because it's not just a goal you didn't reach, but it's something that reflects back on your self-image and how supposedly attractive you are perceived to be. And it can really be a... Never mind. Maybe I'm too old. <laughs> ...hit on your self-esteem. Christina took modeling jobs here and there when she could, and as part of that, she moved to New York City to further her career. Modeling can be difficult once you post for Playboy. From the outside, it looks like it might be a stepping stone, but once you're there, you realize a lot of brands don't want to work with somebody who's posted. Like, can I please record? They encountered a lot of difficulties that she maybe wasn't prepared for. Christina's modeling career didn't take off after her Playboy appearance, and she oh, was wow. kind of left adrift. Oh, wow. Playboy as a brand really has no, you know, support for women once they're not working for them anymore. I think they just look at it as, well, you know, we can't babysit all these women for the rest of their lives. On realizing that Miss Craft had been murdered, we met with Alex, her fiance, in the hallway. I told him, I'm very sorry, but Christina's dead. Wow. Once we were finished with the scene, which took hours, the next step is we need to talk to anybody. After we received information that Christina was the victim of this murder, we tried to find out as much as we could about her and her past, uh, just, just given the, the shocking nature of the crime. Christina had a very clear online footprint, and front and center in a lot of the web traffic about Christina was an article from the New York Post about an incident that she had had in 2016 in uh, Manhattan. There was some sort of dispute over paying her tab, and she got into a physical fight with the bar manager. In 2017, she had moved to Ardmore at the suggestion of Alex, her fiance. He felt it would be a safer environment for her in Ardmore, not to mention closer to his parents. Like she was more safe there, which is kind of ironic. It was a little bit difficult for Christina, though she recently moved. She came from New York City, and I think she missed Alex and her friends and the excitement of New York City. Playboy models get a lot of unwanted attention from men. It can be a real problem, especially if you find yourself around the wrong person who just has all the wrong ideas. I guess we'll stop here. Let me take this last bite. Okay. So, this story is about Christina Craft. Okay, so Christina grew up in New Jersey and always had dreams and aspirations of being a model. So, when she got older, she just, um, she did just is that. Being that, you know, she was strikingly beautiful. She had dark black hair with piercing blue eyes she immediately could catch anybody's eye so she had a boyfriend of 15 years named alex and her father just recalls her of just being just such a sweet person and he just says she was the apple of his eye she was the oldest of all of his children her career began when she um, got found at a Maxim bikini model search and from there she was a cyber girl um, on the Playboy site which I didn't even know they had a on the site whatever I knew they had a site but I didn't know it was like back in the day but anyway she was cyber girl of the week in May of 2009 and from there, they said, when you're a cyber girl, you get flown out, you get a whole shoot, and you get the possibility of getting entered to be in the Playboy magazine. So she did her shoot in hopes of being um, being selected, but sadly and unfortunately, she wasn't. And they were saying how it they wish it had, like, they had some type of support because they literally just have you one minute and drop you the next. And... Sadly, she couldn't find any modeling gigs either. So the crime takes place in Ardmore, Philadelphia. So Alex 
calls for a welfare check because he can't get into his girlfriend's apartment and he's been trying to reach her but the door is locked from the inside so he calls for a welfare check first of all like i said why was the police not trying to do a welfare check i get that ardmore is such a safe place but still check on those people so they finally go check on her and they barge in the door and they find the bedroom has been in like a scuffle and a mess and they find christina has been badly beaten like y'all beaten to the point her eyes were fractured she was strangled to death was the cause of her death unfortunately but it was just so much like it, it was extreme violence okay so they go out to tell alex and he's just in an immediate grief like this was his fiance they have been dating for 15 years and he had moved her to ardmore for a safer environment because they used to live in new york city so after christina's body was found alex was questioned and unlike every single time they love pulling up people's past and they pulled up her past that she had gotten a little scuffle in new york with somebody um over a um in a restaurant and they eventually dropped the charges but she had a chance to have like a misdemeanor or something so alex was questioned but it was revealed that he was out of town at the time of the murder so they really had to do some more digging so they go into more of her past and they go into her being a playboy model and so now we're opening up into the dangers of being a playboy model and the dangers of having your naked pictures out there and everything just like that um this case has been like a boom 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 it's 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 heating up um yeah it's 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 getting there I, it's too early to say anything so let's get into it there were for a killer after a model is found dead in her condo christina's death drew a lot of media attention both from local news outlets in the philadelphia region and beyond there were tabloid reporters from europe who wrote about this there were tabloid reporters from new york city who came down to write about it I think Christina Kraft's status as a Playboy model, the fact that she's a young, beautiful woman, certainly drove press interest in the story. I think the Playboy brand, when you hear the name, you think sex, you think beautiful women. It's a they love this brand. Kendra it's also video. On the fringes, it's a little salacious. Christina was a whole person. She wasn't just Playboy model. That was one job she did. Exactly. She was more than that. I was just telling somebody like it's always an and like I'm I'm Judy and a scientist and an adult model and a youtuber like I'm not exclusive to just one thing you know and we like to box people in and we see this all the time when OF and Playboy models and and full service sex workers are, are found or full service s workers are found and and it just sucks that you're just seen as a piece of meat because you have the personal autonomy over your body but other people don't see that you know the world based on my experience i knew that i had to treat alex as a person of interest in the matter he called us to the place he has a long-term relationship with her he's very concerned about her and now i've found her beaten in the apartment alex says on august 21st he had to return to new york city for his job he stayed there and he called christina early morning on the 22nd around 2 30 a.m to say good night christina didn't answer though and alex called several more times but there was no answer from christina just after 5 a.m., Alex was growing concerned, and so he checked the security camera they had at the Philadelphia residence, and he noticed some unusual activity. And this is when Alex decided that he should return to Philadelphia. The distance where his location was, that could he have physically been responsible for this, I don't think we ever really got there. Investigators tried to find out more about Christina and tracked her movements in the time before her death. They pretty early on discovered that she had filed a police report just a few days earlier what? complaining that she had been robbed in her apartment 
and told them that she had been robbed of some personal items that were pretty valuable, some designer handbags and some jewelry, I believe a credit card as well. She told the police that she remembered going to Center City, Philadelphia and drinking at a hotel in Center City. When we got there and spoke to Christina about the burglary, she said that she woke up in a daze, that she doesn't remember anything, that she just wasn't feeling right, and she did allude to the fact that she thought she may have been drugged. Y'all, and getting drugged is so common. And I don't know if I told y'all the story of how I got drugged in college, but my best friend and I got drugged in college, right? Um, we were at a party with our friends. We were at a... Okay, so we went to a PWI, predominantly white institution. And they honestly didn't like when the black students came to the frat to the white frat parties but we used to go anyway because it was free alcohol whatever so we got in there and we saw like one of our good friends so we were dancing with them we was like well, let's get a drink before we go so we just saw the guy make the drink like we saw him pour pour everything into like the like the little gatorade like pour like the football like you know how you get water when you used to play sports yeah that so we started drinking it we literally had a cup I can't hold my liquor. I was like outside, like, and then we went to the other party. Was, oops, 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 oops. But we were safe because we were with our friends. But we were like, oh my god, just imagine if like we came to the party alone. What what could have happened? Drugging is so common, especially in college, but especially in in everyday world. Like there has so many um, like drink covers and stuff you can have to protect your drinks now, because oh my god. Let's get back into it. There's a lot of people who want to take advantage. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of stories about people, you know, having their drinks drugged and not being able to remember, you know, what happened after a night out. And it's yeah. terrifying and it can happen to anyone. Or we were going to do everything we can. Also, I'm not trying to be funny, but if I don't feel safe and my boyfriend's away on work, like, I'm going to need him to come home now. Right now. I got drugged, and then they came in my house. Come home. Come home. I'm not staying here. When my detectives were able to get a hold of the surveillance video from the condo complex thing. Investigators were able to deduce that at some point a gentleman gave Christina a ride back to her building from Philadelphia. And he ends up fitting her description of the rideshare driver that she'd used that night. Wow. I think it was three something in the morning when Christina and the driver arrived back at her apartment and she was passed out in the back seat of the car. So he took the liberty to take her keys, go into her condo. And he spent over an hour and a half inside, presumably burglarizing Christina Kraft's An hour and pocket. a half is nuts. He came down holding a box full of Christina's personal belongings that she had later reported stolen. And then he's seen in video coming back in with Christina Kraft, helping her into the lobby. And he kind of puts her down on the ground and he steps out again. And then he comes back in, helps her into the elevator. The man in the video scene going into Christina's apartment was African-American, um, wearing just sort of nondescript clothing. I mean, she was just still really upset, worried, kind of looking for guidance, what's going to happen, will I ever get my stuff, am I safe? Investigators can look into her credit cards and they find... Okay, I should have mentioned this earlier, but it's so funny to me when non-black people say like have to say black or say african-american they get so nervous he was african-american like they get so nervous like relax bro he was black okay find that some of her credit cards were used at a nearby convenience store they get images and, and videos from those convenience stores and they're able to match them up with the surveillance video from the apartment mm -hmm. The investigators were able to recognize the person who used it as Andre Melton from prior arrests of his. And he looks stupid. Andre Melton was considered dangerous by detectives. 
there was some urgency to apprehending him. <laughs> Tell him he looked stupid. <laughs> it was a decision that we were going to attempt to get a search warrant signed. They get a warrant for Andre Melton's arrest. They go to his last known address, and they find the things that were missing from her home. Again, expensive stuff, you know, jewelry, <laughs> bags, things like that. But they can't find him. We knew he knew the layout of Christina's apartment, so it was logical to think that Andre Melton could be the killer. He was looked at as a murder suspect, because what are the chances? Who becomes a victim like this twice in, in, in a couple days? Yeah. Another good stopping point. Woo, child. Mm. Okay, y'all. So let, let's 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 get into this. So days before Christina's murder, which she was found dead on August twenty second, twenty eighteen. Um, so days before her murder, Christina actually reported a robbery. Okay, but get this. So apparently, from CCV TV, CCV TV, from from footage and and other sources, Christina went to um she went to the bar. Okay, and at the bar she got a drink, but she felt like she was drugged. Okay, they drugged my girl. So she gets into this Uber, which I don't even think was her Uber, and she's passed out in the back seat. He takes her keys, which I don't even know how he knows where her apartment is. Maybe she drunkly told him or something, but he goes to her apartment, takes a whole bunch of her stuff, goes back, puts it in his car, takes her out the car, puts her in the lobby, and it's like, oop, never mind, I'm going to put you in the elevator. Puts her in the elevator, and then she stumbles back home, reports that. You know, she's been drugged and her stuff was missing. So, she reports it to the Ardmore police and they're like, Oh my God, we're going to try the best we can we can do to help you. Meanwhile, her fiancé and longtime boyfriend, Alex, was in New York for work. But like I was saying, I wouldn't want him to come home. I don't feel safe. I got drugged and robbed. Come home. I'm not staying here no more. Period. So from what they could see from CCP footage was that he was black and that he had nondescript clothing. After further investigation, they could see that he used her credit cards at local convenience stores. So they put two and two together. So they're like, okay, it's not Alex because he was out of town. His alibi, you know, might have some holes. Like, it's not like he... like is 100% innocent like it's not okay yeah his, al his alibi is rock solid because like anything can happen at this point they don't know but they trust him because they have good discernment keyword of the day I've been saying that word a lot so now they go to suspect two which is apparently they feel like the guy that robbed her so they're like let's tone in on who robbed her they found out that this guy the perp is Andre Melton silly and they put out a warrant for his arrest. So they go to his last known location and they find that it was nothing there but all of Christina's purses and items that he's stolen, but they could not find him at all. Whew. Okay, so now we get into the last portion of this. Let's see, can we find Andre? Let's figure out what's going on. Because to me, I feel like Personally, it, it couldn't all be Andre. I'm not trying to say he looks simple, but he looks simple. He don't look like he's a mastermind. I'm not trying to be funny. I feel like one person drugged her and one person was the get up, like the rob, drive, take her there man. I don't know, is he the killer as well? But we go find that out now. Let's go. Andre Milton led police on a little bit of a cat and mouse as they tried to find him. Police are dealing with two investigations here. One, the burglary involving the model. The second, her death. There was so much going on. We were looking at who committed the homicide. Where are we going to find Andre Melton? Well, we started to be able to get some video surveillance from the condo building itself. On the night of Christina's murder, there's clear footage of her exiting her building and heading towards Philadelphia. Hours later, there is additional footage of her returning to her building, being escorted by an unidentified man. Mm, who is this? They come in, it's shortly after three in the morning, and they walk in together, and they get in the elevator, and they go up, 
and there's no other door movements until almost 10 minutes after 5 in the morning. Mm. So there's about a two-hour window. That man who entered the building is not seen leaving the building, which led investigators to believe that he somehow exited another way. She's on the second floor. She has a balcony. She has a slider to the balcony. And around 5 a.m., the, the slider opens. Oop. Stupid. The rear balcony isn't that high off the ground. You can we easily, gotcha. you know, go out and, and jump off and, mm -hmm. you know, get away that way. We know so they what was the, the reason? Front door because we never... What was the reason? What was the reason? What was the reason? We had detectives on the ground searching and looking for evidence. And then some of our detectives found what looked like it might be a foot stomp in the ground, which would be easily explained as somebody jumping off of uh -huh. the balcony. Out where she was. And from those images, they were able to chart her movement from her destination when she first came to Philadelphia all throughout Center City as she walked down different streets and around different bars and nightclubs. At this point, it was a matter of gaining all this footage and then putting it together to come up with a timeline. It was very tedious. Mm -hmm. When well, we looked at the video, I could see Christina work. with a murder suspect walking with their arms around one another. I remember Broad and, and 13th was where they got into a ride share, and that's when the car took them back to Christina's, to her condo. And the ride share is probably Andre Melton. That unidentified man w was not Andre Melton. All right, who got, who got the snitch? On August 23rd, I get a phone call. This person identifies himself as Andre Melton. Ooh. I was a little surprised that I'm talking to the guy that we were looking for. He's this one himself. I wanted to make it clear, he said, I stole her stuff, but I'm not going down for a murder. Okay. Period. He said, I may be a thief, but I ain't no killer. When Playboy was training playmates on how to handle the media, that was great, but I think there could have also been some additional training in how to keep yourself safe how to handle maybe judgment you might face, you know, going forward in life. There should have been a seminar for Playboy models on how to handle this kind of thing. Okay, so why, why do I keep bringing that up? What does that guy have to do with that? Early on, there was speculation that these two gentlemen were connected in some way. But ultimately, as investigators learned more about each individual, they found that that was not the case. Dang, she just had bad luck. Investigators continued to solicit tips, one of which came from a gentleman who was a driver. That during the ride, they appeared to be very friendly, very affectionate with each other. Around 4 a.m., Christina somehow, in a very charged situation, was able to contact her cousin. And although Christina didn't leave a message or speak, her cousin could hear the background. And what she heard was a man forcefully telling Christina, don't call the police. Mm. On August 26th, the police got a call from a man who said that he knew the identity of the person I seen told Christina you somebody in the surveillance see footage that was released to the media. This was somebody he had been roommates with in a psychiatric facility in Philadelphia. Not a psychiatric facility. Philadelphia. Woo! So they check out that tip, and they were able to trace him back to an incident in Love Park in Center City, Philadelphia. At one point, he followed a woman into the family court building and started harassing her. He began causing a scene in the building, kicking windows, screaming and yelling. So he was taken into custody, and he was put on a 72-hour hold, a psychiatric hold. This person had told him perhaps the most chilling detail in this whole case. He said that he had recently strangled a woman and had bragged about the event and said that there's no other feeling quite like feeling somebody's life escape them as you choke them. So we got a serial killer, or at least he tried to be. He was a... He was a I hope they did some great police work and seeing who, who, who was the other woman is he talking about? Or was he talking about Christina? God. Able to As all this is playing out, they get a call from a family member who lives in Philadelphia and saw the video 
Oh, no, he was, so he, after strength Christina, he followed the lady. Oh, okay, and now he confessed to the guy in the psychiatric ward that he strangled somebody. And now he want to do it again. Okay, so now they really got to go find him. Okay, I'm here. I'm here now. The police released, they identified a suspect was Jonathan Harris. He'd recently been released from prison. I have no words. <laughs> I want to joke him so bad. I have no words. Jonathan Harris had served a sentence for robbery. He had just been released on July 15th, five weeks before Christina's murder. Wow. By the time they identified him as a suspect, he was already in the wind. I spoke to his sister, and we ultimately learned that there was a bus ticket that was purchased, and that Jonathan was on that bus, and that he was headed to Pittsburgh. Ooh, where he get him? Released. I ain't gonna lie, but if I got that notification on my phone and I was on that bus, I would have bricks. You hear me? They would have had to pull that bus over. Because they would have been like, it stinks. I would, bricks, you hear me? From prison in July. Got the team in place so that we cut off his avenues of escape. And we were locked. That would have made me nervous too. Like you pulling in to your bus station and you see police everywhere. Like, it would have gave me set it off vibes. Lying and wait in a trap for Jonathan Harris to arrive in Pittsburgh. He was from Montgomery County, sat in a room with them, and tried to get a statement from him about what had happened on the night of Christina's murder. It started out very friendly by all accounts, but just hours later, the evening took a terrible turn. He mentioned that he was pretty high on the day of the murder. He had smoked some marijuana, he had used cocaine, he had been drinking, and he also mentioned to using K2, which is a street name for what is essentially synthetic marijuana. They were going back to her apartment, and he had an ounce of cocaine that he was going to sell her. She says that she's not going to pay him for the cocaine, and he gets angry. He's scared because he needs this money, and so he says there was a physical altercation. At one point, she hit him with a wine bottle, and things got out of hand. Harris was adamant that he had nothing to do with Christina's death, that when he left Christina's apartment, she was perfectly fine. But the detectives could see that there were some inconsistencies with uh, Harris's story. They knew that a coroner's examination found that Christina had no cocaine in her system whatsoever. <laughs> they took a little bit of a break. They gave him some time to think. And it starts to fall apart. And it doesn't take very long for him to just spill break. his guts. He even made a comment after he was in custody that, well, she was still breathing when I left. I don't believe that. I don't think there's any possibility that Christina Kraft was breathing when he left. Exactly. Harris was charged with first and third degree murder. Andre Melton was arrested in December 2018, which was several months after Harris had been taken into custody. Police had been looking for him for quite some time and ultimately caught up with him when he was arrested in Philadelphia on a minor drug possession. Her case went to trial and Jonathan Harris pleaded not guilty. There was a lot of evidence in this case. This was a really airtight investigation by detectives on Harris guilty of first degree murder and he was sentenced to life in prison. A Philadelphia man accused of murdering a one-time Playboy model has been found guilty on all charges. I think Christina had modeled for so many years, and modeling is a career that isn't always going to be lifelong. You have to have other careers kind of in place to kind of take over that mm -hmm. fulfillment in your life. I hope moving forward that Christina is remembered for the amazing, beautiful girl that she was. This was <laughs> crazier than I thought. 
Okay, so they go on a mass search to search for Andre Milton um, because he was the last person they saw that, you know, was going in and out of her apartment and he knew the layout of her apartment. So they were looking for him. He ends up calling. And I was funny. I was like, somebody go snitch. He ends up calling and was like, I'll go down for a robbery, but I ain't going out for a murder. And I know that's right, because if I am a rob, don't say I did it all. I did half, but not all. So they go back to look, and they see um, footage from the bar she was at, and she actually was walking with another black gentleman, but they couldn't see who this man was. Apparently, Christina flagged down an Uber herself and said she wanted to go back from Philadelphia to Ardmore, um, and her and her friend wanted to go. But before I get deeper into that, they saw that it was Christina and the unidentified man coming into her apartment at like three, two something, but they didn't see anybody leave. You get what I mean? I believe her, her apartment was like really wired and bugged up with cameras. So they saw that somebody left her apartment by via the sliding door at around 5 a.m. and they could see who it was. They couldn't really see, but you know you get an alert when your sliding door is notified. So they sent out detectives to see, you know, if they could find any evidence and they see a footprint. So apparently the person jumped from the second floor down and left. So this is where they're at right now. Back to what I was saying. So the authorities continue to ask for more tips and gather more tips and a rideshare driver ends up calling in and says like hey yeah i know that guy and i know that woman i gave them a ride to artmore he says that christina flagged him down and that they seemed pretty friendly and comfortable in the car um it wasn't like any type of pressure or nervous or unsafe situation so they get to artmore and christina tells him i don't have cash even though she told him she did he was like what she pulls out her american express and he's like i don't take cards so the guy was like if you stay here for 15 minutes i'll come right back down and i'll give you a hundred dollars cash so the guy was like okay whatever so they go in the apartment and the uber driver or the rideshare driver says they were waiting for about 20 to 5 25 minutes and they just end up leaving because they were like you know what it, it's not worth it and they head back to philadelphia at 4 a.m. the night of Christina's murder, Christina actually called her cousin. But her cousin really couldn't hear anything of what Christina was saying. The only thing she could hear was a man in the background saying, do not call the police. So about a day or two goes by and a man ends up calling police and says, I know that guy that y'all been showing on tv he was my roommate in the psychiatric ward well in the psychiatric hospital and he bragged that he strangled a woman to death and he loved how much power it gave him weirdo i really feel like people like that have like a creepy god complex like they love the the ability to give and take life it's a whole theory about that really interesting However, they that man was a John Doe. They did not know his name at all until the man's family identified him as Jonathan Harris. He was literally just released from prison weeks before the murder. I believe he was in prison for robbery um, and burglary. So I guess he like just had a bucket list of crime he just wanted to knock off. I don't know. Or he missed going back to prison. A warrant was put out for Jonathan's arrest. So they began searching and searching and they couldn't find him anywhere in the Philadelphia area that they were in. So his family, I believe his sister called and was like, actually, he's on a bus to Pittsburgh. So they basically set it off on him. Like they corner him. So when the bus students got in the station, they blocked him off. And they say he was like the third person off. They arrest him. Of course he lied and said, that's not my name. That's not me. And they took him in immediately. Found out it was indeed him. 
they started questioning him and he came up with this bogus lie so what we do know is that he said Jonathan saw Christina in the bar he said he frequently saw her being that he would go to that bar and I guess she used to go to that bar or this wasn't her first time but Christina was alone so they began talking conversation was well and they ended up going outside he also told police that he was high on uh, weed like he had smoked weed he also did some cocaine uh, he was drunk and he also did some K2 which is synthetic marijuana why do you want the fake marijuana you got the real stuff so he told police that they were going to Christina's apartment because he was selling her an ounce of cocaine so this is why he was saying like that whole 10 minute wait for me blah 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 BS but actuality you already know that was a lie because they found that Christina actually had no trace of cocaine in her system in fact Alex said the entire time he's known her she's never ever used cocaine so the detectives gave Jonathan some time they were like you know what we gonna let him get his story straight we're gonna let him figure it out so he finally admitted to killing her but thought she was alive when he left her apartment how you strangle somebody to death brag that you felt somebody life leave their body and yet you felt like they were alive the spirit and get me and riddle me this y'all he covered her body up with the rug and everything so even if you thought she was alive why cover her body up like in the soprano style rug form he told police that he specifically left that way so he won't be detected by cameras and literally a few days later jonathan harris was charged with first degree and third degree murder of course Jonathan pled not guilty and his lawyers were also trying to argue that it wasn't first degree because first degree of course well not of course some states it doesn't but first degree in the state of Pennsylvania it holds a life sentence so he was trying to escape that so they were trying to fight for third degree murder but eh, it did not work he was found guilty of first degree and was sentenced to life Andre Melton, however, had some more run-ins with the law, and he eventually was found guilty of the robbery of Christina Kraft, and he was placed in state prison. Ultimately, I have no idea why they kept mentioning like her being in the limelight, because um, I don't think that had anything to do with it. I think Andre Melton and Jonathan Harris were just criminals <laughs> like i'm not trying to be funny like they just wanted to kill well not they i feel like andre just wanted to you know get some money and i felt like jonathan just wanted to kill like he wanted to feel what it feels like to kill somebody which is very very weird this is a sick sickening so i don't think her being in playboy has anything to do with it other than you know yeah because I was trying to figure out why they kept mentioning that. I don't really think it had anything to do with that. But I think it's very interesting that her partner wanted to move her away for safety reasons from New York. And it just eventually led her to this. I ultimately feel like that location probably she was in is just not a safe location to, to party in. It's probably a very high traffic uh, crime area. Especially to travel alone as a woman, you know. Which I, that sucks. Ugh rest in peace Christina Kraft like this is insane like two event crime two big crime events happening to you the same week is insane to me insane insane like I felt like they were probably telling her she needed to get away like the ancestors or the spirit was like hey go go with your husband get away don't come back here because it's not good energy I don't know that is so like odd to me you know but everybody was saying like Christina just loved her highlight of her life was being in Playboy and modeling for Playboy which I think is just so beautiful I definitely agree that they do need like a mental health like linkage program for anybody that's moving out of S work or out of like adult modeling or modeling because it's like very hard to to like I don't know 
get out of that and she was saying get into a realm of finding your your passion and other things all right thank y'all so much for hanging out with me and watching another episode of sw and true crime reacts how y'all feel about this episode i don't know this has me like very like mm, it's very like crazy that it happened but i don't feel like it personally to me it was like they came and attacked her because she was in playboy i don't feel like that's why you know what i mean make sure you hit that like subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when i post the next I'll get out y'all hair. I love y'all and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.